can't believe it's already been a full decade, but 10 years ago today, Mike Trout made his debut, and ever since then, he has broken and shattered so many individual records. In the comment section down below, I want you guys to let me know, who do you think is the best player on the Angels going forward? Is it Mike Trout, or is it Shohei Otani? What's going on everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. Thank you all so much for stopping by yet again. If this is your first time on the channel, we do this every single day. And also don't forget to use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek if you're going to any baseball games, the All-Star Game, or the Home Run Derby. Save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order. Now speaking of the Home Run Derby, I'm going to be there. And my friend Joey Gallo as well as Juan Soto are the final two contestants in the 2021 Home Run Derby. I cannot be more excited. Between Otani, you have Olsen, Gallo, Soto, Alonzo. This is one of the more stacked home run derbies that I've ever seen. And the fact that I get to see it live in Coors Field with Trevor Story also in it, I mean... This is amazing. So let's go ahead and talk about the teams of Joey Gallo and Juan Soto because both of them played yesterday. And first and foremost, we have the Rangers taking on the Tigers. You have Akil Badu singling in the first inning, and that turns into a Robbie Grossman RBI. Then Joey Gallo and Jamir Candelario, they trade home runs. They kind of go back and forth. And then Gallo hits a 460-foot bomb. He has 10 home runs in his last 10 games. He is playing out of this world right now. And then you have Miguel Cabrera pinch hitting for Akil Badu. It was a lefty-lefty matchup. So AJ Hinch, he was playing the matchup. So he went with Miggy. He drives in a run on this infield single. Then Scope and Grossman make it 5-2. to two. And Gregory Soto, the all-star, comes in for two shutout innings and the save. The Tigers have been playing really well over the last two months. So hey, if you're a Tigers fan and you don't even have Riley Green or Spencer Torkelson in that lineup, you gotta be feeling pretty good about your chances going forward into 2020. 22 and beyond. Now let's talk about Juan Soto's team, the Nationals, because they destroyed the San Diego Padres. You have Juan Soto hitting a three-run oppo taco, and then Josh Bell, as well as Starlin Castro, they quickly make it 7-0, and before you knew it, it was 10-0 before the fifth inning even came to a close. Patrick Corbin was solid yesterday, only allowing two earned runs and six innings of work, and the Nationals, I mean, when, they, when it's all said and done, they have 15 runs at the end of the day, and when you score 15 runs, I mean, I I guess all you really have to say is sheesh. I just wanted an excuse to show that picture from Juan Soto. I mean, that thing goes hard. Let's talk about the walk-off victories from yesterday. The Marlins are the Dodgers' daddy, apparently. So you have Garrett Cooper and the Dodgers trading runs back and forth. The Dodgers actually go up 5-3, to three, and then Garrett Cooper with his second home run of the day. He completes the comeback, and Jesus Sanchez actually grabs the lead back, but pinch hitter and maybe even rookie of the year favorite in the National League, Zach McKinstry, he ties it up for the Dodgers, and that gives Jesus Aguilar the opportunity to collect his third career walk-off home run. This was a three-run shot. I think it was 368 feet, something like that. So it barely went out, but regardless, the Marlins, they win over the Dodgers. Now, one more thing I do want to mention on the Dodgers is the fact that apparently, now I'm going to, you know, emphasis on apparently. I don't know if this is true or not because maybe these guys weren't following him before, but Mookie Betts, Dustin May, Justin Turner, Albert Pools, and a few other Dodgers players have now unfollowed Trevor Bauer on Instagram. So whether that's because of PR, whether that's because of surrounding allegations, I don't exactly know why they did that, but there's an update for you guys and I'm going to keep updating you as the situation transpires. We have a doubleheader from yesterday. Let's talk about the first one between the Mets and the Brewers because this was a walk-off victory. You have Luis Arias going off of Jacob deGrom and then Jacob deGrom luckily has Francisco Lindor on his side. So Lindor ties it up and deGrom later on in the game becomes the second fastest human human in baseball history to rack up 1,500 strikeouts. Jace Peterson, we've talked about him a lot over the last two or three weeks. He comes in clutch again versus the best pitcher of my lifetime. Then Peraza answers back, and the bullpen for the Mets kind of implodes momentarily. As Christian Yelich gets hit by a pitch in his thigh, so the Brewers go up by a single run, but McNeil walks it off with a base it up the middle, and the Mets, they win game number one. And then game number two was all Milwaukee. You have Pena, who was one for his last 42 before for this home run, I mean, that's got to feel really rough. One for 42, that's not good. Dom Smith, he makes a leaping catch in left field to try and shift the momentum, but then you have Willie Adamas hitting his 14th home run, and Brad Boxberger, he was setting himself up for a scary eighth inning. He walks three consecutive hitters, but then he immediately follows it up by striking out three consecutive hitters, so he came in huge, and then Urias hits a two-run home run, so a home run in back-to-back -back games. He's now up to 12, and the Brewers, ever since they've traded for Willie Adamas, they're 31-13. and 13. 
that's the best record in baseball since that point. Another doubleheader I unfortunately have to talk about. Uh, the Rays smoked Cleveland yesterday. That's all you really have to know. Videl Brujan. This was exciting for me because I'm a baseball fan first and foremost. He made a slick play at second base and then he comes in with an RBI single for his first base hit. Steals a base immediately after. He is going to be so special with Wander Franco up the middle. Kevin Kiermaier drives in two RBIs and then adds three more on this no doubt shot in the third inning. And then Brandon Lau as well as Brett Phillips. They want in on the action with the home run department, and then Michael Walker goes six innings, one earned run, six strikeouts. That is the eighth loss in a row for Cleveland. Taylor Walls for the Tampa Bay Rays drives in an RBI, and then Wander Franco makes two really nice plays at the hot corner in the fourth inning, and then Taylor Walls comes in yet again. He drives in the second run in the bottom of the fourth, and Yandy Diaz, he knocks in a pair. As the bullpen for the Rays combines for a seven inning no hitter, I do not count that. I don't care what you say. Cleveland has now lost nine games in a row with their AAA pitching staff. Their starters have a 10.22 ERA in the last nine games, and they've lost every single game, a nine-game losing streak. Well, at least the Cubs are beating us in the losing streak, right? So like I just mentioned, the Cubs are on an 11-game losing streak, so two worse than Cleveland. It doesn't really get better for Cleveland fans because Jason Hayward and Nico Horner driving a few RBIs, and then Ortega tags Wheeler as well as Anthony Rizzo on this RBI triple. Wilson Contreras drives in the fifth run of the game, and Andrew McCutcheon, I want to mention it because the Phillies got smoked. Let me just say that right now. He's up to 15 home runs and a 121 OPS plus at 34 years old. That will definitely play. Jock Peterson and Patrick Wisdom, they drive in the final three runs and the Cubs snap an 11 game losing streak. So Cleveland, nice. You are the sole possessor of the worst losing streak in baseball. So hopefully the White Sox lost yesterday so Cleveland doesn't lose any. Now they won yesterday. Lurie Garcia hits a two run home run and three extra base hits later. It is five to one Chicago. Lance Lynn, he was able to capitalize on that insane offensive performance from the White Sox as he goes six innings with six strikeouts. Brian Goodwin drives in the final run of the game and I just want to show this base hit from Billy Hamilton. The ball bounced a foot in front of the plate and he was still able to beat it out for a base hit. I mean, who can really do that? Who has the speed to make that happen? The Astros and the A's are going to be battling for the rest of the year for first place. And Matt Olson, he's going to try his best. Unfortunately, even though he hits number 21 on the season, that was it from Luis Garcia. As Jose Altuve bat flips this three-run home run, he now has 19 home runs and 52 RBIs. He has been insane. Manaya, he tried his best, but he left a meatball to left-handed hitter Kyle Tucker. That was his third home run of the year against Sean Manaya. And then Ryan Presley turns in his 16th save of the year. Houston is on a six-game winning streak and they're almost six games ahead of the A's now. Let's talk about the Yankees and the Blue Jays because they're battling for that three spot in the American League East. The Yankees beat the Mariners narrowly yesterday as Luke Voigt and Glaber Torres drove in the first three runs and then Judge hits number 20. He raises his OPS plus to 150. If Shohei Otani and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. did not exist, Aaron Judge would be your MVP right now, at least in my opinion. Herman implodes. I know a lot of Yankees fans are not comfortable with Herman Marquez or Roldis Chapman at the moment, but these two guys guys, Jonathan Lasagna, that's my nickname for him, Jonathan Loisiga, and then Chad Green, they come in and shut the door down. Both of those guys have been absolutely unhittable the last two weeks, and Loisiga should have been an all-star. Then the Blue Jays dismantle Matt Harvey. He needs to hang it up. I cannot believe I have to keep on saying this. Vlad, he drives in an RBI, and then Biggio makes it three to nothing, and then the offense does even more damage. Gurriel Jr., Bo Bichette, and Vlad Jr., they make it five to nothing, as Matt Harvey has an eight ERA in his last one. 150 innings, please, for the love of God, Matt, go ahead, please, hang it up. He is not Hung Jin Ryu, no, Hung Jin Ryu was fantastic yesterday, seven strikeouts, only one earned run, and five innings of work, and Bo Bichette hits homer number 16, he has a 126 OPS plus, so aside from the batting average, both him and Andrew McCutcheon are kind of having the same season, so you better put some respect on the 34-year-old phenom, Andrew McCutcheon. Another offensive eruption came from Atlanta, we have Okuya hitting a 445-foot moonshot for home run number 24, and then, and then you have Abraham Almonte, Austin Riley and Arcia breaking it open for seven runs, but the Braves, no, no, no. They were not done yet. They score seven runs in the eighth inning. It was capped off by Abraham Almonte and Adrianza driving in the final runs. As four different teams are kind of in the running to win that division in the NL East, you have the Mets in first place. I believe it's the Braves, the Phillies, and I don't know. I'll, I'll show it right now. I can't remember. Sonny Gray allowed two early runs, and then he says that's enough of that. He goes back to the clubhouse. He strips down completely and says he had a mental 
reset and when he came back onto the diamond after stripping down like he said he makes sure that the Royals don't score any runs as the Kansas City bullpen spoils a dazzling start for Brady Singer Akiyama and Naquin they extend the leads in the eighth and ninth inning and the Reds win five to two even though Brady Singer only allowed one earned run in six innings all right let's talk about Shohei Otani because he made history yesterday but before he did that Jared Walsh and Phil Gosselin they make it a quick two nothing lead and then Otani hits home run number 32 already that means he passed Hideki Matsui for the most home runs in a single season by a Japanese born player and Hideki Matsui actually responded to this so my hats off to Hideki he was always a class act you have Jared Walsh going back to back with Otani Andrew Heaney was I guess good three earned runs in just under six innings and Walsh comes in huge with a home run in the seventh as Rizal Iglesias nails down his 18th save the Angels win by one run so the final two games we have two NL West teams coming out on top the Diamondbacks beat the Rockies six to four you have Nick Ahmed and Dalton Varsho putting Arizona out in front early and then starting pitcher Humberto Castellanos on this sacrifice fly helps himself out with an RBI he goes four shutout innings and then Eduardo Escobar hits an absolute nuke 440 feet he now has 19 home runs and 58 RBIs I mean some other playoff contender is going to pick him up hopefully he deserves a chance to win some ball games and the last but not least the Giants you have Oviedo of the St. Louis Cardinals giving up a lead and then he starts cursing at Mike Yastrzemski because he thought that Yaz was stealing signs so kind of a weird situation this double from Donovan Solano makes it a 3-1 lead and then Alex Wood goes seven dominant innings with six strikeouts only allows one run and then I think his name is Darren Ruff I can't remember his first name a three-run moonshot gives Jake McGee his 17th save of the season and that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate if you guys made it all the way until the end. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. Stay safe out there, and I cannot wait to bring that vlog at the Home Run Derby. I'm so excited. Joey Gallo, Shohei Otani, what?